Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Outdoors. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here in the Philippines. Um, I've got a few videos here I'm going to do in my car just because it's nice and quiet and, and you see we're not bouncing around I'm sitting in my carport I'm starting to get hot right now I'm gonna turn on the car in a couple of minutes and and I might blast some air conditioning in between videos because even when it's idling there's a little bit of vibration on the camera right now it should be just crystal crystal clear and and uh, smooth so uh, I've got an old knife here this is a it doesn't have a brand name on it. This is a old, old Marlin spike knife. This is from the, the early 1900s or late 1800s. It has a Marlin spike on it with, with no lock, which is kind of neat. The blade's been sharpened a gazillion times, and it's all worn down and stuff. has the same sheep foot end on it, but it's been sharpened so many times that the blade curves up on it. It says Sheffield, England on the on the blade, which is supposed to be a famous place for steel in the older days. Um, it's got kind of like almost like a pearl handle scales that are so used, so used that they're almost worn off. This was my grandfather's knife. This is a knife that I think his daughter gave to him or something like that. I got it when he died. Um, I didn't think anybody else would want it. So to me, it's very special. I'd like that. I wish I had one of his knives from when he was a real sailor. My grandfather was a, my grandfather in the 1970s, for, I just didn't change the subject. In the 1970s, early 1970s, my grandfather was the last man in the world alive that sailed on a boat called the, a ship called the Falls of Clyde, which was bought by the Bishop Museum in Honolulu, Hawaii, and turned into a museum. And my grandfather was flown over there in, in 68 to about 74 every year to spend two or three months to help authenticate how everything was back when he was, a, he was actually, I think he was actually a cabin boy on that, that boat there back in about the 19... 15 maybe somewhere around there 15 1917 maybe something like that um he wrote a book about three inches thick on the the ship on how everything was rigged and the, the what the cabins all look like and stuff i was lucky to go over in i think it was 1971 71 or 72 i got to go with grandma and grandpa and grandma's friend edna to Hawaii, and we spent two months there in the middle of the year. It's the middle of the school year. It was wild. February, February, and I think it was January and February. We were there. Um, spent a, a a whole month on the island of Kauai, about three weeks in Honolulu at the Ilikai Hotel, which was fabulous, which was unbelievable, uh, and then a, a week in uh, Hilo, Hawaii. But it was so cool when we were in. Uh, Honolulu. My grandpa was kind of like a, a celebrity back then. There'd always be big articles about him in the paper and stuff. And uh, when we went, the year I went there, it was cool because that was when they had, remember when they had the the superstar Olympic-like thing with the the celebrity superstars, whatever it was? That was filmed in the Hilton uh, grounds. That was right next to us. And then we stayed at the Ilikai, which was a real tall, skinny hotel with a revolving restaurant on it and when we were there also i got we got to go to don ho's restaurant and we got to eat we ate dinner with don ho and four of the guys from hawaii 50 not mcgarrett or dano but the hawaiian guys <laughs> it was so cool i mean i was just a punk kid you know i was only 11 years old something like that 11 or 12 years old and uh, uh but for me it was really cool and uh going on the ship the falls of clyde was awesome if you ever get a chance i, I, I think they might have even sold it by now they 
the, the Bishop Museum was costing them too, mon- too much money to keep it or something like that. And so they wanted to sell it and turn it into apartments or something like that, which is just bizarre. But uh, I don't know if they did sell it or not. And I have to look it, look it back up again. But my, my grandpa was uh, in his mid, mid-70s mid when we went there. And he, he, climbed, he climbed right up the mast. And my grandma got so mad at him. My grandpa walked right out to the, I don't know what you call the front, the, the front pole that goes straight out from the bow. He walked, he walked right out on that 70 some years old, right out to the tip of it and stood there for, for a photo. And, uh, I, I can remember, I can remember here, my, my grandma yelling at him, just screaming at him, you know, he was going to kill himself or whatever. But, but, uh, grandpa was pretty cool. What was neat about the ship was I saw pictures of the ship when I was a kid and I'm sorry for dragging on this on here, but this is really interesting to me. I saw pictures of the ship when I was a kid. It was a four-masted freighting ship. My grandpa told me stories about being in in hurricanes and stuff in it, but it was loaded. It was loaded with coal, and the winds were so strong that the boat was tipped over so far that the yard arms were actually in the water. That's how how much resistance just from just from the masts and the and the and the. I thought I thought there, there was ropes going up holding everything on, but it was a three hundred foot. A three hundred foot freighter, four masted freighter, no no engine whatsoever. And when I got there, the the masts were up, but the yard arms were still down. They had the the rigging up, and then I got to see the rigging, and it turned out to be four inch cables, steel cables were what's going up and down, holding the masts on and stuff like that. Where I thought they were ropes and things like that. You, know, you remember the old, you know the bounty movies and stuff. But um, I was just awed by the size of it. And they had, when, I, when we were there, the uh, captain's quarters were all redone and the, the pilot, you know, area was all done and just fabulous, beautiful. We're, I'll, I'll put up some video, uh, uh, some photos and stuff sometime of it. Maybe you guys are interested, maybe you're not. And there's a few of our viewers are from Hawaii. Uh, I don't think from Honolulu, but they're, but they're there. And uh, the Falls of Clyde, though, was just an awesome thing. It was a, uh, a, uh, a being pulled as a, some kind of a freighter up in Alaska when they when the Bishop Museum found it. It was just had no mass on it, nothing. And uh, it's a big steel boat, not a not a wood boat. Very, 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 very interesting. It's a wonderful time in history. My grandfather was a sailor from. He was born in 1896, so. Would have been would have been about ninety or nineteen oh nine nineteen ten. He got into the shipping, into being a sailor, and he, like I say, cabin boy. Worked his way up to be a a sewer guy. That was the top the top job on the boats. And uh, he he joined because in he's from Denmark, and he he ran away from home because at about twelve years old they were taken people off the street and just grabbing people and throwing them into the Danish army or Danish Navy and stuff. And, uh, uh he didn't want to be in the war. He just, he, he went and was a, uh, on a freighters and stuff. And, uh, but very interesting guy. I'll, I'll tell you a story about him sometime, but that's, that's all I got for now. I just wanted to show you the, the cool knife. When I, when I see the knife, I take it out a lot. I see it. I think of my grandpa and, uh, makes me feel good. Every time, every time I tie a knot, I think of my grandpa, and uh, that's why I use I use different knots like the the Carrick's bend to connect ropes. That's a sailor's knot. That's a knot my grandpa taught me when I was a kid. My uh, Bahol centipede knot, the quick release knot. He taught me that when I was about 12, 12 or thirteen years old. Some guy some guy on the internet said he invented it or something <laughs> a few years ago. What do they call it? The millipede knot or something? What a bunch of crock. I've seen the knot in 15 different books with my grandpa. My grandpa showed that to me when I was a kid. All it is is re- reverse or repeating, alternating half hitches is all it is. And very simple. My grandpa, everything my grandpa had, like all his magnifying glasses and everything, they all, and then they had a handle on it, all had uh, a twist, the twist knot that I, I have a couple of videos on my twist knot. Uh, makes just for decoration for things, just beautiful stuff. And he had knots everywhere you can imagine. And, and uh, he, he, here's here's one. I, I sent a I sent a letter to the Bishop's Museum a while back, and my grandpa made a great big picture frame for him for the, a picture of the Falls of Clyde, about a f- 
four by four by five uh, foot frame, and he covered the whole entire frame with decorative knots. And uh, I asked the Bishop Museum if they still had it, and I said, "Yeah, it's in a in a back room." He said, "But it's 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 it's, it's beyond repair because he said he said your grandpa used 3M glue, which is yellow, and turns yellow after a while, and all the cords were white." So it didn't look good enough to display, but the, the knots were exceptional. I remember, I remember when, I remember when he made it, I remember watching him make it. And, uh, I, I love that thinking to talk about my grandpa and my dad and stuff. Take care, everybody. Uh, hashtag 22 day. Let's, let's take care of our veterans too. And, uh, figure a way to, uh, get the, the problem they're having uh, everyone else aware of it. Uh, go outside, have some fun, and by all means, be safe. Uh, watch your backs, guys. Take care.